Christian. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MSUM Dragons podcast. I'm, I guess, your host, John Webby Webking, joined by my always hashtag fired up co-host, Doug <laughs> Peters. Doug, how are you doing today? I am fired up, man. Are you thankful today? Well, maybe I am thankful today because tomorrow is... Thanksgiving. Wow, we didn't even practice that, Webby. Rolls right off the tongue. It's like we've been doing this all year. <laughs> That's right, exactly. So today we're talking about a couple of things that are more than a game. We talk about what we are thankful for. So I'm going to hit this softball right over to you. What are you <laughs> thankful for today, Doug Peters? Oh, man. Yeah, was, uh, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is I'm thankful for a wife and a family that allow me to work the crazy lifestyle of college athletics because I love what I do. I love being on the MSUM campus. Ditto. We've had, you know, in the past two weeks, I'm thankful because my wife has supported uh, bringing students and student athletes into our home to celebrate different things. And that part is just awesome. And I couldn't do all that I do without the support of my wife and my family. I would absolutely agree. We just had my parents up last weekend who I haven't had Thanksgiving with since I was a student athlete because that life of a student athlete around the Thanksgiving, especially the winter sports, you're not able to go home as, as much because you have games or tournaments or things going on around that time. So uh, I, I remember having team Thanksgivings all the time and those kind of great bonding moments were really good deep bonds were created but definitely thankful for my wife uh our daughter our families and we'll be going to the in-laws in Perm uh to eat some some good food so i can't wait to also thankful for good food right uh, so as you talk about the food interesting story in case you haven't paid attention there might be a snowstorm coming yeah like and, a little weather yeah there might be and i know our our coaches that are in practice right now are trying to give our student athletes as much time off as they can and so i'm appreciative or feel comfortable giving that much time off. I'm thankful for our coaches who are cognizant that our student athletes want to go home. They're cognizant of the safety side of things. I was in Coach Walthall's office the other night after we beat the University of Minnesota Morris and we're talking about Thanksgiving, talking about the snowstorm. And right out of right away as we're talking about the snowstorm, Jenny Walthall, Chad's wife, is like, well, do I need to get more turkey? Are we going to have a lot more extra guests? You know, just that that mindset I'm thankful for that we are trying to take care of our student athletes yeah. as well. Yeah, well, we talk about it in sports all the time of the next next person up for the position when things situations present themselves. Who's going to step up? And sometimes it's our families, yeah. uh, especially in our, our line of work as coaches and administrators in, in the world of sports is – it is a family business, whether you like it or not. And uh, God bless all of our families and support systems. <laughs> all right, no kidding. I can't say that enough. You're right. Um, another thing that I, I think I'm going to shoot for being thankful for is, and I know it sounds cliche, but our troops and our military. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I know that seems overused today, but I just had an interview with uh, Nick Eklund, so be on the lookout for that video coming soon. That's going to be fantastic. Fighter Pilot School, yeah, he, he, yeah. that's the Neckland because his, his Twitter name is, is Neckland. <laughs> but he's an MS, for those of you who don't know, he's an MSUM football alum who went into the Navy. I think while he was here, he always had the ambition of going into the military. He was thinking about working on tanks. That didn't work out, so he ended up somehow uh, the Navy opening their arms to to Nick and going through flight school and, and going to Pensacola and all the training that it took. And on on his Facebook, there's a fantastic video of him going through the G4 simulator. Right. Oh, man, is that just wow. But uh, I got to catch up with him the other day and just talking about uh, the things that they had to believe in it, Dragon Football, in order to take a team that wasn't so successful and believe that they could achieve bowl games and playoff conversations right. someday and help be that group that turned it around. And now, after his experience, continuing to believe that I could be an F-18 fighter pilot and fly the most agile machine on the planet and you know, just that kind of belief that was instilled here that they could and continuing that on is really kind of a powerful message and he's in uh, Virginia Beach Florida right now trying to fly those hornets and I just wanted to it just you know humbled me that there's a lot of people who not just sacrifice you know the ultimate sacrifices we hear about too, all too often but just the lifestyle and the families as we discussed our own but the military families across uh, the country and 
those touched by the military history here at MSUM, just thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't say it enough. Right, I can't echo that, echo that enough. Right now, our women's basketball team's in in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm sure we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a little bit of things to be thankful for. And they're at Pearl Harbor, and so one of the things I always think about uh, with Pearl Harbor, obviously, we've got, got World War II, and the the... I've been blessed to meet several World War II veterans because they're tied to Dragon Athletics. Larry McLeod mm -hmm. uh, comes to mind, um, and, and that list goes on and on, and there are less and less of those veterans um, as time goes on, un unfortunately. And what they sacrificed for me so that I could do things, I was thankful to go vote the other day. Yeah. Um, it, it, because they fought to give that right to me, and it is unbelievable. So that's a great thing to be thankful for there. And thankful for all of our student athletes that give us our purpose every day, right. for sure. And uh, one that I'm, I'm going to be talking to shortly there after this, uh, that was a standout in the last week, was Nadir Youssef. Um, Tom Berg did a really nice write-up of him before competing at Nationals on his kind of journey to where he was. We made a little hype video, and I don't know if anybody caught this, but in the hype video I put... Um, all American in there. It was a really quick, like, like <laughs> tenth of a second thing. Hey, there's that belief, Webby. I believed. I believed that he could he could achieve all American status, and you were down there with him. So you tell me what it was like to be firsthand witnessing a student athlete who's worked their entire career for a moment go out there and have that kind of a performance we haven't seen in over fifty years. You know, it was awesome. One of the things I was going to talk about being thankful for is opportunity. So I'll talk about two of them right now. So the opportunity that Nadir had to go out and compete in the national championships was just awesome. He ran almost the best race he could possibly run. He ran at a really, really, really high level, and it was it was it gave me goosebumps just watching him have that opportunity and how he prepared. I got to be with him probably about that 24 hours leading into the race of course i didn't get up and do the warm-up run i did eat the second breakfast not the first breakfast you know, so who knew two breakfasts on national championship day for nadir uh, the the part though that sticks out when i talk about opportunity is the opportunity that we get to provide through a lot of people's support and working together to provide these opportunities for our student athletes you think about nadir in that feature that tom wrote i mean nadir spent 10 years of his life in a refugee camp I mean, that part is crazy in itself. I can't even comprehend that. And here he is. He ends up as a dragon. Uh, he's very active all across our campus. And then he finished 14th out of like 270 runners yeah. who were there competing at the very highest level. Best finish out of all the cross-country runners in the Northern Sun Conference. Right. He established himself as an elite student athlete. That part's just awesome. Then this morning... Uh, our, our swimming and diving coaches had a student athlete and their family here. Uh, they are here to sign their letter of intent. And just the emotion out of that student athlete who's so excited to come and be a Dragon and excited to have the opportunity to compete at the collegiate level. And the doors that, the, the, the doors that are open for our student athletes if they take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of them. Uh, so thankful for that. Yeah, it, it's a... I, I will echo that because my experience here as a student athlete led to exactly what you're talking about. I wasn't the best standout athlete, but I got to compete. I got to make a team, make friends that were groomsmen in my wedding and still yeah. keep in contact with today. And it eventually led into a relationship doing radio and TV and then helping coach and then this wonderful opportunity that you've given me um, to be a part <laughs> of this staff and continue to work on that cycle that we discussed in our last podcast right. of creating uh, more and more opportunities for student athletes to continue, um, whether it be athletically, professionally, there's a lot of opportunities that happen here that I'm really proud to be a part of. So thank you for that. Oh, you bet. And so then I'm thankful too. I mean, this is just going to keep rolling on here for a few minutes. I'd I, be more thankful if I was with the women in Hawaii, though. Right. You see, yeah, yeah, that sounded pretty good when we're talking about bad weather rolling in this weekend. Right. And so then I was chuckling. If you're on social media, there was the picture on Facebook. And Carla is posting more pictures on Facebook. It's good to right. see some things besides uh, sunsets dogs, cats. and cats and dogs. Yeah, um, it, posting the picture at Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And then one of her players from 2006 posting their picture from 2006. Yeah, I think it was Emily Palmer. I saw that. <laughs> so it literally, the teams in... It, 
in the same spot right. years after each other. Right. Um, knowing exactly what that experience was was really cool to see. But yeah. Yeah, and our student athletes having the opportunity to go play in games like that. So you think about all of the opportunities and the thankfulness I have for how our, just let's talk about women's basketball, how they got to Hawaii. So we have basketball players and student athletes that want something because who doesn't want to go to Hawaii? Right. And then they went out and, and worked for it. Either the countless concerts they worked at the Fargo Dome. Mm -hmm. You know, I know they've cleaned up after We Fest, which is not something I would even want to begin to tackle. But they, they had a goal at, and they went out and they worked really hard at it. And the opportunity was there. That door was open for them to go through if they were willing to put in the effort, the time, and make the commitment to uh, accomplishing that goal. And so when I think about those opportunities and what it teaches our student athletes, uh, you know, throughout the process. And the next thing you know, they're in Hawaii. That's a, I'll, I'm never going to go to Hawaii. I'll mark that down right now, Webby. And they're there as, as student athletes, as 20 year olds. And maybe they understand the, uh, how awesome of a trip that is yeah. right now. I think it'll probably be about 10 years before they really understand how awesome of a trip yeah. it was. But just thankful for all the different experiences our student athletes get to have. We talk about Nadir being at the national championships. Talk about our women's basketball team being out in Honolulu. Uh, we could go down the list of all the unique opportunities our student athletes have had because they're our student athlete here. Yeah, and I think the big thing is the student athletes took a lot of ownership over that process. And there's a lot of people, as you said, the community that helps right. the, the the coaching staff, the parents, mm -hmm. the the donors. The administrative staff. Yeah. The, the well, the administrative staff. staff didn't help out that much because I'm still yeah, here, Webby. Here, I mean, no, we would have got that right. You know, clearing some of the travel and the budget stuff. Yeah. I know it's it's yeah. a it's a lot of stuff, and so it, it really is a team effort, and everyone's involved in creating opportunities like that for our student athletes. As Emily Palmer showed us on the Facebook post that they hang on to and, and will never forget. So very right. thankful to be a part of that process. Yeah, you know, so I. I don't want to get too redundant here. Again, we'll go back to social media. Um, do you do anything besides surf social media? Yeah, you know, I got to keep myself interested. In, oh, I better not say that. Um, <laughs> so there, were, there was a softball player, uh, uh, D'Onofrio, um, from out on the East Coast in, in her timeline somewhere. A picture showed up from 5 a.m. in the morning uh, walking to practice in the snow. And just the comment that she made of, ooh, I wish I could go back and, and be there and do that again. And that's where I get thankful on one side is that we've got a great, I guess we've got a great pool of people that are trying to provide those opportunities for our student athletes. We're trying to make lifelong memories and provide an atmosphere where student athletes can make lifelong memories, lifelong friends, and accomplish things they never ever thought possible. Whew. How's that's that for being thankful? That's big stuff. That's big stuff. And, you know, thankful for a couple of days off coming up here to spend time with family. <laughs> that's right. And then right back to it as we're, we're thankful to engage our local community with Moorhead High School in Fergus Falls coming here on Saturday, which, you know, because of the, the Hawaii trip, trip it, it all comes to together to have one really kind of cool night where we're going to have uh, a ninth grade a junior varsity, a varsity boys basketball game uh, with our, our friends at Moorhead High and Fergus Falls playing those games, and then MSUM men against Northern, which is always a highlight of the year. Saul Phillips is now their head coach coming back to the Fargo Moorhead area for the first time since he left at NDSU. Right. I mean, if you're a local basketball fan, I'm going to be thankful for that day because it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. It is, and it's interesting how all of these things we're thankful for tie in a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So women's basketball have been fundraising for three years to be able to go on this trip to Hawaii, and then the way the schedule fell, it made it so that they couldn't play Northern State, who's our travel partner, and our NSIC rules allow us to split those games, and I've wanted to do that, mm -hmm. and this put us in a situation where our women's team played last week, yeah. our men's team is playing this Saturday night, and I'm like, oh, single double header. After the high school season starts, call up our good friend over at Moorhead High, Dean Halgo, and say, hey, Dean, what do you think about And before I was done? He's like, we're in. Yeah. And that's going to be an awesome day. I know that it will be an experience. The varsity game will be on TV. Yeah. So you've got uh, Moorhead High and Fergus Falls uh, players that are going to get to play live on TV, which probably isn't something they've experienced before mm -hmm. a whole lot uh, in, in an atmosphere that's just different than what they usually compete in. 
And then you top it off, they get to watch a, a I would say a high level Division II men's basketball game. It is going to be a great night. It's a great night, and we're we're thankful to be here and for our families and the time off, all that wonderful stuff. But we're fired up to be here. So thank you for listening to the MSUM Dragons podcast. Hey, Webby, how many times do you think we said thankful in this podcast? I'm counting. It might be a game of some sort later. That would be fantastic. (laughs) Our challenge to you is, hey, share with the people you're thankful for. Tell them why you're thankful for them over this Thanksgiving holiday. And of course, go Dragons.